Good morning. I'm Amy Morris. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. President Biden has landed in Israel. He spoke earlier this morning with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and explained why it was important he made the trip. I'm deeply sad and outraged by the uh, explosion at the hospital in Gaza yesterday. And based on what I've seen, it appears as though it was done by the other team, not, not you. And that was President Biden, who was telling Prime Minister Netanyahu that the explosion at the Gaza hospital again appears to have been done, quote, by the other team, not you. Netanyahu thanked President Biden for his visit. Mr. President, for the people of Israel, there's only one thing better than having a true friend like you standing with Israel, and that is having you standing in Israel. Your visit here is the first visit of an American president in Israel at a time of war. It is deeply, deeply moving. Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden will hold meetings the rest of the morning. President Biden's visit comes following that explosion at a Gaza City hospital that killed at least 500 people, both sides blaming each other for that. Daniel Hagari is an Israeli military spokesperson. An analysis of the IDF operational systems indicates that a barrage of rockets was fired by terrorists in Gaza passing in close proximity to the El Hali El Mahdi hospital in Gaza at the time it was hit. Intelligence from few sources that we have in our hands indicates that the Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch which hit the hospital in Gaza. The Israeli military says in the past conflicts, around 20 percent of rockets launched by Gaza militants misfire and land in their own territory. Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, is clear on where he believes the blame lies. What happened tonight is a great tragedy and a horrifying war massacre that cannot be ignored or allowed to pass without accountability. This aggression against our people must stop and these crimes must come to an end. Mahmoud Abbas is president of the Palestinian Authority, speaking through an interpreter. Well, after the hospital explosion, Amy, President Biden's scheduled meetings with Arab leaders were canceled. One Biden administration official says the decision to cancel the Jordan part of the trip was mutual. National Security spokesman John Kirby is traveling with the president, and he says Biden is meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to discuss, among other things, that deadly hospital blast. He's outraged, sad, we're all shocked by the horrific loss of life. The numbers are staggering uh, for a single event. And Kirby says humanitarian aid for Gaza is also top of the agenda. We want to see humanitarian assistance flow in, and it's not just a one and done. We want to see it be able to be sustained. Food, water, um, obviously electrical power, um, medicine, all the things that the, the people of uh, Gaza are going to continue to need. National Security Spokesman John Kirby says the president will also meet with Israeli first responders and families of those lost or taken hostage in the Hamas assault. The hospital explosion will complicate efforts to contain the conflict. Daniel Kurtzer is the former U.S. ambassador to Israel. The trading of blame doesn't change the fact that uh, hundreds of people have been killed and the president will be landing in the midst of an escalation in the humanitarian disaster, which does change the narrative. So it's going to be a much more challenging uh, trip than even it was before uh, this event. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel Daniel Kurtzer made those comments on Bloomberg's balance of power. Well, Amy, overshadowed by Israel's conflict with Hamas is a meeting this morning between Russian leader Vladimir Putin and China's Xi Jinping in Beijing. They were both there to mark the 10th anniversary of China's global infrastructure push. And here's Putin speaking through an interpreter. Russia and China, as well as the majority of states of the world, share the aspiration for equal and mutually beneficial cooperation in order to reach comprehensive, sustainable and long-term economic progress. And Russian leader Vladimir Putin endorses Xi's signature Belt and Road Initiative as a sweeping alternative to the U.S.-led world order. And back in the U.S., we want to update you on the latest developments on the battle for the Speaker of the House. It appears Congressman Jim Jordan's bid may be in trouble. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter with the latest. The first round vote was an unmistakable rebuff. He lost much worse than Kevin McCarthy did in his voting rounds. He will need to flip 16 votes to gain the gavel. And a second round has been scheduled for 11 o'clock Washington time this morning. Jordan has been working the phones, but the objections being expressed are the fears of how he will govern and ties with Donald Trump. 
Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Ed, thank you. Turning to the markets, earnings continue to roll in with more than 20 companies in the S&P 500, including Netflix and Tesla reporting. We'll also hear from Morgan Stanley this morning. Morgan Stanley's earnings come a day after Bank of America reported its best third quarter results in more than a decade. CEO Brian Moynihan tells Bloomberg he sees the Fed achieving its goal of slowing consumer spending. Frankly, the Fed has won the battle with the American consumer, and, just, and they're slowing down. And then the question is, what happens next? I can't predict, but this, this is a $4 trillion base, 3 to $400 billion a month. So think about it. It's hard to move around a lot. So once it slows this level, it's probably not going to kick right back up. And Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan says more affluent customers are now shifting excess savings to products with higher yields. And this is Bloomberg. Thank you, Karen. Time now for a look at some of the other stories making news around the world. For that, we're joined by Bloomberg's John Tucker. Good morning, John. And good morning, Amy. Tuesday's hospital blast in Gaza City, triggering protests across the Middle East overnight. From the West Bank to Beirut and east to Jordan, some trying to storm the Israeli embassy in Amman. Security forces used tear gas to disperse the crowd there. Protesters in Iran also marched outside the French and British embassies, setting fire to Israel's flag. Former President Donald Trump returned to his $250 million civil fraud trial in New York yesterday, still fuming about the partial gag order issued Monday in his election interference case in Washington that he's now appealing. I'm a candidate that's running for office, and I'm not allowed to speak. A judge, Tanya Chutkin, wrote she cannot imagine any other criminal case in which the defendant is permitted to call the prosecutor deranged or a thug. In addition to his civil case in New York, Trump is facing four criminal cases. Another member of Sam Bankman-Fried's inner circle took to the stand in the fraud and conspiracy trial of the FTX founder. Nishant Singh testified for a second day, telling a New York courtroom he was uncomfortable with the super ostentatious $30 million Bahamas penthouse the company bought as a corporate crash pad. Singh frequently said he disapproved of Bankman-Fried's actions, but didn't always take action. Russian President Vladimir Putin accepting an invitation from Vietnam's president to visit the Southeast Asian country soon. That's according to a post on Vietnam's government website. The visit would follow President Biden's trip to Hanoi in September, during which Vietnam formally upgraded ties with the U.S. to a comprehensive strategic partnership. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's office says it's reviewing whether 10 financial companies, including Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase, violate a Republican-backed state law that punishes firms for restricting their work with the oil and gas industry because of climate change concerns. The probe is one of Paxton's first major actions since his return to the Attorney General's office after facing impeachment proceedings earlier this year. Global News, 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm John Tucker, and this is Bloomberg. Amy. Thank you, John. We bring you news throughout the day here on Bloomberg Radio, but now you can get the latest news on demand whenever you want it. Subscribe to Bloomberg News now to get the latest headlines at the click of a button. Get informed on your schedule. Listen and subscribe to Bloomberg News now on the Bloomberg Business app, Bloomberg.com, plus Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Time now for the Sports Report, brought to you by Tri-State Audi. For that, we bring in John Stashauer. Thanks, Amy. Second year in a row where the Phillies couldn't win the division, can't lose once they get to the National League playoffs. A year ago, they finished third in the NL East, still won the pennant this season, 14 games behind Atlanta. But they beat the Braves in the division series, and they're now up 2-0 on Arizona in the NLC as the Phillies won game two, 10-0. Two home runs for Kyle Schwarber. The Phillies are 7-1 this postseason. Texas Rangers are 7-0. They host Houston tonight. Game three of the ALCS, and Max Scherzer starts for Texas, back from injury. He hasn't pitched in more than a month. Speaking of injuries, Aaron Rodgers has a torn Achilles, expected to end his season, while Rodgers told ESPN yesterday that he still has many hurdles to clear before playing. His Jets coach, Robert Salas, said, if anyone can do it, it's Rodgers. He's definitely one of those individuals who's fueled by doubt. You know, if you doubt him, it only makes him stronger because he's got this... Oh, you're you're telling me I can't do something? Well, I'm going to show you I can, and uh, he's he's a he's going to prove you wrong. And 
And so he's got a tremendous drive and a tremendous mindset to him. Jets have a bye week. Giants Sunday host Washington. Giants in two home games this season have been outscored 64-3. to At the UBS Arena, Matthew Barzell scored on the power play second period. That was it. Islanders, a 1-0 win over Arizona. In Boston, Celtics won a preseason game from the Knicks who sat out most of their top players. Knicks and Celtics will tip off the regular season one week from tonight at the Garden. At Barclays tonight, game for the WNBA Finals. The Aces lead the Liberty 2-1. For Las Vegas, another chance to win the championship. John Stash Hour, Bloomberg Sports. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business App, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Amy Morris. President Biden is in Israel on a trip that will likely be overshadowed by an airstrike on a hospital in Gaza. Let's bring in Bloomberg's Roz Matheson in London with the latest. And Roz, as you know, earlier this morning, the president already had a sit down with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And during those comments, he said, quote, it appears it was done by the other team and not you. A reference, of course, to that airstrike on a hospital in Gaza. Where does that leave things now as far as the president walking this tightrope between showing support for Israel and at the same time reassuring the people of Palestinian? Well, certainly we can expect that he's going to be showing strong support for Israel. The U.S. is a key ally of Israel. They've been sending some military aid in and obviously the frenzy of diplomacy being led by the U.S. Secretary of State in recent days in the region. But the reality is they are also coming up against that rising anger uh, in the Arab world about events inside Gaza, the, the unfolding scenes of humanitarian despair there by many people and now this attack on the hospital. And regardless, in a way, of what was the cause of it, the narratives are set and are hardening very much uh, on either side about it. Uh, And so Biden making that comment doesn't necessarily change anything from the Arab world point of view. We're seeing protests uh, breaking out around Israeli buildings and and, and other establishments in the Arab world today. We're seeing that also in places like Turkey, for example. So certainly it's a very, very careful balancing act that the US president needs to strike here because he does want to show support for Israel. Israel was attacked by Hamas uh, inside their own lands with, you know, Israeli civilians killed and kidnapped as part of that, you know, only a few weeks ago. Um, So he was, he does want to sort of show support and solidarity for Israel in that moment, but also to sort of caution about the unfolding catastrophes that we're seeing inside Gaza and possibly the risks that might be involved from a full-scale ground invasion of Gaza, both the humanitarian crisis question for those people living there, but also the risk it brings in other actors in the region. Okay, let's talk about that. This looks like it may be harder than expected to contain this conflict. It definitely complicates efforts. What's the next step? Well, that's right, because the U.S. president was scheduled to go on to Jordan, where he was going to meet with various leaders, including uh, from Egypt uh, and the Palestinian Authority. And that meeting's now cancelled. And so the Jordan leg is off. And as I said, there's that rising rhetoric uh, from countries, including Egypt uh, and obviously Iran, around all of this. So what is the off ramp there? We know the U.S. is saying this publicly, uh, which is unusual for them, that they are doing a lot of back channeling at the moment including with Iran, urging them not to get pulled in, urging them not to use Hezbollah, uh, which is sort of their tool in the region, to attack Israel because of that risk of a wider conflict. But certainly it seems minute by minute the U.S. efforts alongside others there to contain that are becoming more and more complicated. Is that a signal we should be paying attention to then, Roz, that other leaders in the region have made this decision to not meet with the president while the president is actually there? Well, it's very, very difficult in the in the aftermath of that hospital attack, regardless, again, of what was the cause uh, for them to, to do so. And certainly the uh, Palestinian Authority chief made that decision in a way on behalf of all of them. That, but that doesn't mean that comms are not happening. We've seen the German Chancellor meeting uh, with Sisi of, of, of Egypt. Today, uh, there, are, there are those comms going on and certainly extensively back-channeling. But again, just because things are so fraught and so tense, the 
idea of off ramps here becomes more complicated. And so, what does that look like? Do you agree in the end that Israel can do more targeted attacks on Gaza versus a full scale ground war? Is that something that everybody would agree um, is sort of a, a something of an off ramp, or is the moment for that just passed? It's it's very very difficult to know. Is that the most the president can accomplish then? Is try to convince other leaders to make sure that this does not start to expand and and that this is contained? And certainly the other priority is to try and open some of the humanitarian corridors for Gaza because right now very little aid is getting in. We're talking about people who don't have access to drinking water, who need medicines and so on. And also the the issue of of people who are in Gaza who want to leave uh, and are trying to get out to go through Egypt. So a big focus of it will be can there be a way to safeguard a humanitarian corridor of sorts and then also the imperative, of course, to try and keep things on a cooler footing in the region more broadly. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington. Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM Channel 119, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Amy Morris. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.